A tokamak is the most advanced of current fusion machine designs. In it, we create a plasma, a superheated gas in the fourth state of matter. We use magnetic fields to trap the plasma, and the aim is to hold it stable for long enough for fusion reactions to occur. Within the plasma, the fusion fuels, deuterium and tritium, will then fuse and release enormous amounts of energy. This only happens at high temperatures of hundreds of millions of degrees Celsius. One way to produce plasma in a vacuum vessel is by running a current through a gas. For research, we use hydrogen, but in a fusion power station, they'll use two varieties of hydrogen, deuterium and tritium. The extra energy strips electrons away from the atomic nuclei, and the gas becomes an electrically charged plasma. The plasma can be confined using the magnetic fields produced by the large magnetic coils around the tokamak. The hot plasma is kept away from the walls of the tokamak by a magnetic field, which is produced primarily by two sets of coils, the toroidal field coils and the poloidal field coils, which control and contain the plasma horizontally and vertically. Plasma control is incredibly important to keep the plasma confined and stable, and to prevent it from hitting the walls of the tokamak and losing its energy. Losing control results in what is called a disruption, and it has the potential to damage the tokamak, as well as requiring a plasma restart. Welcome to the ST4D control room. I'm Otto Asuntar, senior physicist here at Tokamak Energy. So I'm responsible of the, the plasma control system. So what the plasma control system does is it controls the machine during the pulse. So the, the two seconds when, when we have a plasma inside ST40, that's the remit of a plasma control system. What we're going to start with is, is magnetic control. So we'll take in magnetic measurements, uh, reconstruct the plasma, figure out its shape and position and plasma current, and then control that during the pulse to, to follow the predefined uh, waveforms that the operator has, has requested. So say the plasma is sitting at, at the mid-plane of the device, but maybe it's, it's further out radially than, than the operator would, would like. PCS will then, then automatically see that, uh, detect that and, and correct it, push the plasma a bit further in to the, to the position that, that the operator wanted it to be sitting at. Plasma control works by comparing the actual plasma position with the desired plasma position to find the difference. This difference is then multiplied by a correction factor and fed back to the tokamak coil controls to change the currents on the magnetic coils. This changes the magnetic field they produce, which in turn pushes the plasma in different directions and helps to shape it. Our control loop runs every 100 microseconds, so you have quite a few of those in that two second period. You will have time to move it around because it is responding very quickly to, to our actuator signals, which are the power supplies. So as we, we modify the voltages on the coils, the, the plasma will respond. Feedback control is the, the big thing that we will have this time around, which we didn't last time. We will have the solenoid so we can go to much higher plasma currents than, than we did during program zero. I think those are the, the big improvements. Plasma control is the foundation of, of tokamak operations and it also in, improves the, the repeatability of discharges because the plasma control system will try to correct for small errors. Plasma control will become increasingly important as we look to reach 100 million degrees and go on to develop a fusion power generator with superconducting magnets. Everybody believes in a, in a common goal and everybody's working hard to, to achieve those, those goals that we've, we've set ourselves. 